Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a really good video for you today. This video is gonna be about the show, of course, Behind Bars Rookie Season, and we have the top seven inmate troublemakers. Do I really think they're that bad of a troublemaker? Maybe not, you'll hear my views here. But before I get started, everybody, please check me out on YouTube member programs, Patreon, Discord, our Real Deal podcast with me, Larry Lawton's going real well. Please check the book out, Gangster Redemption. Really great read, uh, you'll really be surprised. And remember, really soon, coming September 1st, is the launch of the Crooked Diamond Cigar. What a great cigar, I can't wait. This is very exciting for me. Okay, everybody, let's get into this show. This episode is pretty cool, because this episode is the seven top troublemakers. Let's check these guys out, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on them. If I was yelling at you, then you know. You're yelling at me right now, you're raising your No, my voice is loud already. You trying to show off because you have, a fish. I might have you a fish. Number, but I've been doing time since I was I like can't eight. tell. I've been doing time since you was a baby. Okay? I ain't doing no time. Time means I've been working here. That ain't doing time. Okay, so you coming off like this, you ain't doing nothing. You know, you've seen a confrontation between an inmate and guards. Obviously, this this is a either a very it's a low security in, uh, facility of some sort because it's dormitory style livings. You won't see dormitory style livings in maximum security or any kind of really serious prison. Uh, you're seeing this guard, which they do have guards like this. This guy's not a rookie, obviously. He's willing to throw down, and you will see guards like that with three down. I used to like to see guards like that because if they're willing to throw down, I'll deal with them. Now this guy here is giving this guard a hard time thinking he's a badass or whatever he is. And here's, watch what the guard does. This is really good. So if you want to step, step. Step, there you go. Step. Give me some gloves. Let me take this room down right here. My house is right there. I'm gonna shake this house down. I like the way they call it a house. When you're in real prison, they have cells, usually two man cells, that's your house. This is a bed, you can call it your house, it's your area, uh, but. <laughs> This inmate doesn't realize he probably just fucked over somebody else. Shake my house. No, 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 no. You said you wanted to step, you step. You walked off. So now let me do my business. He was just showing off just to show off. That's <coughs> what he was doing. Right. So that that raised alarms right there. Then he, when he was trying to direct me to go to his bunk, then I know something's up. Where's that, bro? Huh? Oh, where you found that at? Shoot. Guards do, do, do a lot of these shakedowns. That's just kind of normal stuff, everybody. Shakedowns happen. Uh, whether somebody does it or not. You don't like to see it when it's something stupid, but it happens all the time. It's something that, uh, you know, I don't get mad at the other dude for, oh, you know, you should just be a good guy so you don't shake that. Now, try to escape, do whatever you're gonna do. I, I used to get mad at when some guys would say, oh man, if you try to escape, we're gonna get locked down, we're all fucked over, man. Who gives a shit, the guy's trying to escape. Man, be a convict, be a convict. Uh, so, in that regard, uh, hey, listen, I don't, I don't blame anybody here, this is just what they call prison life. Those shoes right there, put it back in the shoes. Take the shoes. Take the whole thing, we confiscate the whole thing. See the bumping of his gun, got his buddy lit up. That's a good one, dog, that's a good one, bro. Now, obviously in that case, they, they throw you, they get contraband, they usually throw you in the hole. Again, a lot of camps have no hole. If you go to Eglin in, in, in Florida, if you go to Maxwell, you go to any of these camps, like the Atlanta camp, they don't have a hole at the camp. You don't go to the hole. You either get chipped or you go to a higher level prison and then you go, because if you go to the hole, they don't want you at a camp anyway. Uh, they might give you extra duty, they might do something like that. Uh, obviously in this case, uh, they're not talking about, hey, let's lock him up, uh, you know, call the shoe. He's going down, down, he's going uptown, whatever you want to call it, we call it. Listen, he's going to the box. But uh, I didn't see that here. Let's go to the next one. I found a cigarette book outside his window, so I thought I'd maybe check his bunk and see what I could find. See if there's anything else that I Something, some treasure. You don't mind waiting in the day room, Neil? Where's the lighter? We ain't gonna find the lighter if we get up. You know, <laughs> I've never seen people start like rapping with them, talking to them what you're gonna find in a cell. They get, they tell you, get, get rough, hit the yard. Usually when they do a shakedown is they get rid of everybody. Everybody's gotta go in that unit, you know? You, you know, when they do a unit shakedown or something of this nature, uh, or if the guy is really shaking down, get out of here, you, you can't be here. And, and that, that doesn't go like, just, oh, I'll do what I want. Uh. 
Again, you're talking about dormitory style living. I don't know the kind of prisons they're in or jails they're in, but it's obviously it's not a place with cells. Even most county jails have a unit and they call it the, uh, the felony pod. And that's where high risk inmates go. That's where I would go somewhere like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're trying to make you feel uncomfortable. They're trying to make you quit. That to me was not a, a troubled inmate. I mean, trust me, it's not a troubled inmate. I've seen some troubled inmates. Okay, on this one now, they're in the box. He's trying to get the guy to lock up in the box. This, this gets serious. This I remember very, very well. This is where they come with the sort team and they don't play. I'm gonna tell you one more time, you come near food for you, your strain or chemical agents to be deployed at this time. This guy is tough. I will say this guy is a tough inmate because, listen, I have been maced in the face. That shit is nasty. I remember being on the floor in the fetal position, snot coming out of my mouth. I can't breathe. It, 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 it's unbelievable. It itches. I mean, you, you are in such fucking discomfort. Uh, it, it's bad. Chemical spray is bad. They're not, they're not even supposed to hit you in the face. It's supposed to hit you in the chest and it comes up, the vapor, but they don't give a shit and that's what happens. This case here is a little bit uh, uh, rough and this guy's obviously mental and you know, I thought about how mental I was. I covered the, the window. That's what I did. That was worse and they didn't fuck with me, but they don't play. They, I've been concussion grenaded this way. It's rough. Come to the food floor to be restrained. <clears throat> Stand up. Come to the food floor to be restrained. <coughs> Come to the food floor to be restrained. <coughs> Stand up and come to the food floor. As you can see, the guard himself is puking from the outside. That shit is nasty, man. I don't know how this guy in the cell is handling it. That's a pretty rough guy, man. I don't mean tough. You Listen, you don't have to be physically tough. You don't have to be, you can be mentally tough. You can have something wrong with your fucking disconnect in your brain that certain things work or certain things don't work. That is normal and that happens a lot. So I've seen a lot of that crazy shit happen too. The inmate actually took about two and a half cans of mace and he wasn't complained. <coughs> you, you know, I've never really seen an inmate do that. Usually when you spray, they, they give up right away, but the dude was drenched in, in, in mace and he handled it. Obviously it was not, not effective to him. That is crazy. Again, you don't give up, you're just on the fetal position. You, you, can't, you can't do anything. You're, uh, you're, you're in a bad way in this shit, man. And I was in it. And you know, I, w I went nuts at one time in the facility. I, I, I did this crazy shit and, and, and I will tell you guys something. It will fuck your world up. For this guy to take two and a half cans, I, that's unheard of. It really is. It's I never won a battle with the Bureau of Prisons uh, uh, in goon squads or, you know, guys do different things. What they'll do is they'll flood their cell. I've seen many of that. They literally take stuff and they, and they hold things open and they flood their cell till it goes down the whole tier and they keep flushing it. That's why in prisons, uh, the outside of the cell can control the water. They actually can control your, your, your water if you have it on or not, or anything for that matter. They'll throw fucking feces and piss and your, you know, all that kind of crap, fermented under the door as places. But the guy is right, you know, it, it's amazing how you will take this little eight foot by 10 foot box that you live in and consider it your home. And I used to walk into that cell in the hole get on my hands and knees and fucking clean that fucking cell. I mean, from the corner to the corner to the back. I mean, with a, a, a t-shirt and then clean the t-shirt, literally wipe that whole entire floor down and make that my cell. You gotta remember, I was in this hole for three years. Every two weeks, they switch you, they move your cell. They move you from one cell to the other in case so you don't get comfortable, whether it's with a neighbor for communications or 
uh, even escape or something like that. They will move you down the tier and they'll just swap you, keep going around. They'll say pack up, you actually pack up your mattress, your everything, and you actually take it down to the next cell. And, and they cuff you. It's not like they don't cuff you, but they'll cuff you in front doing that. So, because uh, normally, you cannot leave your cell when you're in the special housing unit or the hole without being cuffed up. That is a major policy uh, mess up in the Bureau of Prisons. In this case, the inmates obviously coordinating, got sick, these guys didn't do it. And he's right though. You get bugs and shit and you're selling, you don't want it. Now you're gonna fight back. You're gonna do what you do, because I did it. I did it for years. But I never won. Whether we douched the cops and they came back and beat the fuck out of us. You never win. So don't think it's, a, oh, we're gonna get the last laugh. Sorry, you're not getting the last laugh. What's wrong with you? Doing crazy here, man. Thanks for telling me how to do my job, appreciate it. I'm gonna need you on the shotgun right now. Okay. So this guy decides to actually want you to f shoot off the shit around. It's right away. But they last him up. They've been acting stupid since last night. Are you hearing that banging on doors? I used to hear that all the time. When they're banging on doors for nothing, we call that door warriors. But I'll tell you the truth, man. Uh, you get so used to it. I bang on my shared doors. But just to get somebody's attention or maybe they don't even give a shit. You can bang on those doors or you're not going to bang it open. You're not going to open a fucking door. I don't give a fuck how big you are, how tough you are, how think you are. You're not going to. I've never seen somebody bang a door open. Here they're going crazy and they're up in it. They have, a, in some places they have that. They have like a kind of a tower within the prison that looks out over all the tiers. Once he sees they take all the stuff out of his cell, he's gonna start going crazy. Okay, those are the cages. You're looking at a cage that's in the hole that I was in. Like when I came down, <laughs> many times they'd arrest you or arrest you. They'd lock you up, they put the cuffs on you, they take you into the shoe. You're talking about a telephone sized booth cage. Literally a telephone sized booth. And that's where they change you out. You know, I'll tell you to strip and, and, and go there. You could call it a hole within a hole. Wow. But they're not gonna leave you in that. That's where they change you out and they try to calm you down or whatever it is in there. Put you back in there. Try not to come up with you. off the water. A little bit of advice when, when any individual wearing a uniform gives you a directive, you follow that directive. You understand? A real convict knows that they have to listen to somebody. They have to listen to orders. Absolutely. But the real convict doesn't want to be disrespected. You know, you, there's a way to give an order where you get respect if you're a guard, and there's a way to get do it when you don't get respect. As a guy who was in Atlanta, and, and I actually worked in the kitchen for a guy named Perry, who was a hostage during the Atlanta crisis, and what he saw was terrible, but they treated him right because he respected people. We listened to him, we know we have to listen to him, but he treated us with respect. And he used to teach guards after that incident, don't, don't treat these people with disrespect because they'll remember it. And when the, the, the tide is flipped, you already forgot it. But this inmate didn't. And this inmate might just fucking do something to you to fuck you up. And that's exactly what happens. Whose stuff is this? He's cleaning his house. It's all wet. Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Calm down, dude. I don't consider myself tough, but I'm not afraid to be tough if I need to be. Which one's your bed? Which one's your bed? Here, go for it. The top one? Here we go, back to a camp or back to a, a fucking dormitory style living and uh, here's the guards gotta be tough guys or they wanna be tough guys or they think they're tough guys. Go do that in Atlanta. They'll get fucking stabbed themselves. They learn real quick. I always remain scared when I'm here, you know, cause anything can happen. We're outnumbered all day long. Which, which one's your bed? Uh, 141, go for it, all day long. Stay there all day. Please, all day. So you can actually say you got your paycheck worth it today. Yeah, guys start getting mad and, and they say things that are just not gonna work. You're best off ever in a prison, just shut your mouth. Things are gonna happen the way they happen. And yes, I ran into my share of fucking dick guards. I ran into regular guards and you don't know if the guard is being told, go shake Lawton down, go shake this bed down. You don't even know that. Obviously you still, no matter what happens, it's about respect. Well, C cuss at me again, I'm gonna write you up. I didn't cuss at you, I stopped myself. I got a job to do. Well then go do your job. I am gonna do please. my job, but stop okay, cussing at me. Okay. I have zero tolerance for that. Well, I got zero tolerance for you doing this. That's my job. 
Then go do your job and leave me alone. You're coming up to me. So you need to walk away. I'm not gonna walk away. You need to walk away. Guards are told you never get into a conflict. You never get into an argument or a shit, you know, back and forth match with an inmate. You don't do that, obviously. End it. Put them in the hole, write them up, do what you're gonna do, and you know what? Everybody knows what you're gonna do then. I'm just kidding. That, that's what a good guard would have did. But a good guard wouldn't, you know, just harass either. If he's harassed. This guy's just maybe fronting for TVs or not. I don't know. But again, with all the time I've done, I've, you learn what you can get away with and what you can't. Hey, where's your guys' bunks at? Could you just stand by it? Because I don't want you sitting there staring at me while we do our search. There's no need for it. They're trying to test and see if I'll say something, if um, I'll let the rules slide. Thank you, sir. They kind of try to push the, the boundaries a little bit and see what I'm comfortable letting them get away with. Did I see a TV there? Wow, if I saw a TV there, that's pretty good. You can have a TV in a, in a dormitory style place? Wow, what, what place was this? I don't even know what you're talking about. Can you please come down to a dorm uh, and uh, give me some assistance, please? You know, the guard is calling for assistance. One inmate is kind of agitated. You don't know what they're going to do, obviously. But this guard is smart enough to get the help beforehand and not escalate the situation. Because a lot of times, you know, guys, whether they're wrong or right, they think they can do certain things and they can't. On our way. He came up here very aggressively, so I called it for the sergeant to come down, and I could see it kind of turning a little bit. Yeah, he had a guy, uh, he went off. You know, uh, people, you got to understand their state of mind when a person's in prison, but that's, their state of mind is not a normal state of mind, period. End of story. That is not. Now, you know, they talked about behind bars, rookie year, seven toughest prisons. If this was their toughest inmates, this was a pretty weak fucking show. I mean, I mean I've seen tough inmates go after guards, stab guards, uh, I've seen, you know, I mean, I've seen fights and toughness that are, you know, I've seen like the guy, the, the one tough guy I saw there, and obviously only tough because that guy could take two, two cans of, two and a half cans of mace. I couldn't have did it, you know, uh, and I don't know if that's considered toughness either. Uh, toughness to me is, is one, first of all, being a convict is being tough. And here's the difference, you know, is he a convict or is he an inmate? Remember those two words, it's difference, inmate and a convict. You go up to a real convict and say, wait a minute, you were a convict. That's right. I wasn't an inmate. Convicts are always looking out for the right things, cover for people, they'll do the right thing. They'll, you know, they're usually involved with something. Doesn't mean it has to be bad or whatever, but they're respected on the yard. Uh, and then you have inmates who are just like these do boys for certain people, uh, for staff and stuff like that. That doesn't mean he's a rat or anything like that. But, he's, but that, he's, he's an inmate. He's controllable. Convicts are usually not controllable when they're disrespected. They know the rules, but they're not uh, controllable. Obviously, I was a convict. That's why I spent a lot of time in the hole. Right, wrong, or indifference, that's what it was. Anyway, everybody, I hope you like these things. Uh, I like to review some of this stuff. Uh, keep them coming. I'll be doing something on scams. Uh, a, a person sent me some scams from Europe, from the UK. And I'll tell you what, they're pretty good. I'm going to do that one, but I'm doing more more uh, uh, stuff to open your eyes about incidents that go on out there and in prison and in robberies. And that, the next one's about robberies. But have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe, make good choices, and I'll see you next time.